Welcome back. Begin seated with your legs crossed at the middle of the shins. Have the right shin in front of the left. Sit up straight and tall. Bring one hand to the top of the sacrum. Move it in and up so the chest is supported. Shoulder blades in and bring your head up on top of your spine. With your eyes closed, start to connect to your breath. Then open your eyes. Let's transition onto hands and knees now. Place your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees under your hips. And as you inhale, arch your back, wheel your chest through. Exhale, round your back, draw your navel in, spread your shoulder blades. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, round out. Good, then inhale into neutral. And keeping the left hip hugged in, stretch your right leg back behind you. Try not to let your hips twist. And then see if you can get light on the left hand and send the left arm forward, keeping both sides of the neck long, both sides of the low back long. Lower your hand and your knee down and change sides. Stretch the left leg back. Keep the right hip pinned in as you reach back through the leg. Without sinking your middle or twisting, send the right arm forward. Then lower the hand and the knee down. Curl your toes under, lift your knees, and stretch back to down dog. Inhale, glide forward into plank pose. Spread wide across your collarbones. Draw your belly in as you stretch the inner legs. Exhale, stretch back, downward facing dog. Inhale into plank pose. Glide forward, stretch the legs, open your chest. Exhale, stretch back, downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward into plank pose. Good, now hold here. Without sinking, lift your right leg up just an inch. Turn the thigh out, bring the knee up towards your armpit. Inhale, stretch back. Exhale, knee to your chest. Inhale, stretch the leg back. Exhale, knee to the left armpit. Inhale, stretch back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward into plank pose. Lift your left leg up just an inch. Try not to twist. Bring the knee up towards the left armpit. Inhale the leg back. Exhale to the chest. Inhale the leg back. Exhale to the right armpit. Inhale the leg back. Downward facing dog, stretch back. And then set your left knee down onto the mat. Slide your right hand forward a bit so the heel of the hand is in line with the top of the shoulder. And then open up into side plank. Take your right foot forward a couple of inches. Open yourself up. Spine long but navel in. And now see if you can slide your left foot back without rounding your shoulder or letting your head fall forward. Then glide back to down dog. Set the right knee down. Check the position of the right hand. Open up to the side. 
press the right knuckles down evenly without the right shoulder turning in. See if you can slide the right leg back. Make sure you haven't locked the elbow. You're lifting even through the wrist. Good, then come back, downward facing dog. Walk your feet forward all the way up to the front of the mat. Inhale, stretch your chest forward, elongate the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Bring your hands onto your hips, come up to stand. Good, then step your left leg back into a lunge. Lower your back knee down so it's close towards the floor. Take your arms out in front of you. Then raise your arms up. Pull your right outer thigh back into the hip socket. Press evenly into your right heel. Then bring your hands to your heart. And without letting your right knee twist, turn your chest to the right. Back to center. Chest to the left. Back to center. Raise your arms, stretch your back leg. Bring your hands to your heart, back knee down. Turn your chest to the right. Back to center, don't let the knee twist. Turn to the left. Back to center. Stretch the back leg, raise the arms. Hands to your heart, back knee down. One more time, turn your chest to the right. Back to center, to the left. Back to center. Stretch arms, back leg. Now arms to your side, lean out over your knee. Set the left fingertips down, turn, take the right arm up. Change sides, right hand down to the inside of the foot. Back heel down, left arm up. So you can feel that we're changing the pace. This is on purpose, we're trying to raise the heart rate, warming up the body. Bring your hands down, step back to down dog. When we want to stretch on, when we want to work on stretching and lengthening, then we'll slow down. But as we're trying to build heat in the body to keep the body safe throughout the postures, we wanna move a little bit quicker. You'll feel the heart rate increase and breath start to get a little quicker. Walk to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Hands to hips, come up to stand. Step the right leg back into a lunge. And raise your arms. And then lower your back knee, hands to your heart. Navel in, twist to your left, stay upright, back to center. Twist to your right, don't let the left knee twist, keep the thigh pulled in, back to center. Stretch the leg and the arms. Bring hands to heart, lower the back knee a little bit lower, twist to your left, back to center. Twist to the right. Back to center, stretch back leg, raise the arms. Last one, hands to prayer, twist to your left. Back to center, exhale to the right. Back to center, stretch the leg, arms. Then arms to side, lean your chest out over your knee. Make sure that the ankle, knee, hip are still lined up. Set the right fingertips down, turn your chest and raise your left arm. Then bring your left hand down to the inside of your foot. Spin your back heel down as you open up. Bring your hands down. Step into down dog. Good. Preparation for chaturanga. Shift forward. Turn the hands out slightly. Knees down. Spine long. Navel in. Without letting the head fall towards the floor. Shift forward. Lower the chest down. Elbow height. Lift straight back up. Good, five more clean one of those. Don't let your head dip. Shift forward, lower slowly, chest open. Press up. Three more. Lower slowly. Back up. Lower slowly, engage your core, but don't close your chest. Back up. Last one, lower slowly. Back up. Downward facing dog. So that's gonna teach you to build the strength to do chaturanga. Most people that I see practicing vinyasa yoga haven't learned the strength to practice chaturanga properly. 
So that's a great exercise that you can do instead of doing a vinyasa to teach your arms, chest, proper alignment. Walk your feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Press into the feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Raise your arms. And bring your arms to your side. Tadasana, mountain pose. So we're going to practice a couple of sun salutations, but we're going to replace the vinyasa with the little chaturanga push-up strengthening exercise. Balance your weight over your ankles, stand tall, reconnect to your breath. Then inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back, set the knees down, shift forward, lower slowly, modify chaturanga, back up, two more, lower slowly, modify chaturanga, back up, last one, lower slow, navel in, engage your core, back up, then lie on your belly, stretch your toes back, inhale into low cobra, press the hips down even, Draw the low abs up towards the heart. Stretch the elbows straight back. Good. And press up, downward dog. As you hold in down dog, stretch from the outer shoulders down into the knuckles. Turn the inner arms up to the ceiling, armpits. And let the neck release as you stretch your hips and thighs back away from your wrists. Look between the hands, step, walk, or hop all the way up. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up, arms up. Exhale, the arms to your side. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower. Knees down, chaturanga practice. Back up, keeping the chest open, neck long. Two, last one. Three, good, low cobra. Stretch the legs, open the chest. All right, now let's, for this last one, go all the way up into up dog. Keep the thighs in neutral. The lift of the lower belly as you roll the chest through the arms try not to close the front of the shoulders stretch your inner legs big toes back and glide back to down dog look between the hands step or hop up Inhale, Arda. Exhale, fold. Come all the way up, raise your arms. Exhale, Samastiti. All right, now take your right heel up to your left inner thigh. Balance evenly across your left ankle, across the heel, across the foot. Interlace the fingers so the right index finger is on top. Turn the arms inside out. Raise the arms up overhead. But see if you can keep balancing yourself right up over your right ankle. So if your shoulders are tight and you can't take the arms all the way back without borrowing from some other place in the body, that's okay. I'd rather you keep good posture as you stretch your arms. Then bring your arms back down and change sides. Bring the left heel up onto the right inner thigh. Interlace the fingers so the left index finger is on top. Turn the palms inside out and raise your arms up. Bring your arms back down, 
and release your leg. Good. Step your right foot back about four feet for triangle pose, Trikonasana. You can use a block or place your hand on your shin. Turn your back foot in slightly, turn the right leg all the way out, and turn your thigh so that the center of your knee points straight out. Reach out over your leg, make sure the thigh hasn't turned in. As you stretch even into your feet, plug the thigh bones into the hip sockets, but stretch down into the feet at the same time. Press into the feet, come back up to stand. Turn the legs to the other side. And reach out over your left leg. Keep the inner thigh turned forward, but the inner foot rooted as you put your hand down. So in the classic posture, the gaze is up. But I find unless I've done some back extensions before, some good upper back work. My upper back is too tight to get my gaze to look up without straining my neck. So I like soft eyes straight ahead in the standing postures. It's not to say that for your body, that might, not, that might work better for you. Press into your feet and come up. Then step your legs together and stand tall in mountain pose. All right, then separate the legs wide apart again. Let's do extended side angle. Left leg in slightly, right leg out. Bend the right knee, put the hand down, and take the left arm overhead. Press your feet even, draw your navel in, come back up. Turn the legs to the other side, bend the left knee, reach and put your hand down, take your right arm overhead. Inhale, come back up. Turn your feet in so they're parallel. Bring your hands to your hips. Tip from your pelvis and fold forward halfway. Put the hands down. Make a flat back. If you need to put blocks under your hands to make a flat back, that's fine. Otherwise, with the hands flat, stretch the chest forward, stretch the legs even. Then walk the hands back and fold forward. Inhale, come back up, flat back. Exhale, hands to the hips, come up to stand. Then step or hop your legs together. All right, last standing posture. Bring your knuckles together in your upper back. Or if you can do reverse prayer hands, then take reverse prayer in your upper back. It takes a little bit of finagling. Separate the feet so that they're three and a half feet apart. Turn the left leg in 65 degrees, right leg all the way out. Open your chest as you inhale, and then tip from your pelvis and fold forward over your leg halfway. On your next exhalation, fold all the way out over your leg. Inhale, come back up. Turn the legs to the other side. Stretch the back foot even, left foot evenly into the mat, and fold forward halfway out over your leg. All 
On the next exhalation, tip from the pelvis, go all the way out over the leg. Inhale, come back up. Turn the feet so they're parallel and step your legs together. Good, now we're gonna practice Shirshasana, head balance. So interlace the hands, then bring your knuckles behind your head so that the back of the skull rests at the base of the thumb. And I want you to see my posture from the side so that you can see that when my hands are behind my head, the tendency is for everything to collapse and for the neck to lose its space. So I wanna see if I can turn my elbows in but keep the sides of the neck long so that my inner shoulder blades are releasing away from my ears. And then I'm gonna to try to duplicate this posture upside down without letting the shoulders sink into the ears. All right, so let's give it a shot. <clears throat> Set your elbows down, shoulder distance apart, interlace your hands. The crown of the head goes down, back of the skull goes into the hands. Then without losing the space from my neck, I curl my toes and I lift up. Press your forearms down, be light through the neck, see if you can walk your feet in closer without your upper back rounding. If it's going really well, bring one knee up into your chest. Don't let your neck collapse, change legs, and then lower down. Good, so just sit for a moment and feel the effects of the inversion. So if you wanna learn more about inversions, we're gonna have some exclusive content via the website that's gonna be coming out in the next 30 days. So make sure to sign up for the mailing list. You'll be the first to find out about it. And it's gonna be, a lot of people ask questions about how do I do some of the advanced postures. So you're gonna be able to learn all about that on the new website, timsensei.com. So check that out. All right, so from here, let's start to cool down. Sit with your legs stretched out in front of you. Then bend your right knee back like a tree pose leg. Bring the heel in towards your pubic bone. Sit up tall and angle yourself to face your left leg. Take your right arm up to the ceiling and see if you can still sit up without tucking under. Good, if it's going well, reach and see if you can catch your foot. If not, you can just hold the outer shin. But I'd like you to see if you can take the whole back of the spine in and up. Maybe then you could take the big toe, gaze towards the big toe as you stretch the thighs down and away from each other, trying to let the right knee lift up. Then inhale, come back up, stretch the right leg out, bend the left knee back like a tree pose leg, bring the heel in towards your pubic bone. Sit up tall, raise your left arm up, try not to sink. Then reach towards the outside of the foot, catch what you can. Maybe you can hook your big toe, stretch the thighs down as you take the whole back of the spine in and up. Okay, so now in this part of the class, it's really important to me that you slow down and you can breathe in these shapes. If you feel like the position you're putting yourself in is forcing you to close your chest so that you can't breathe, you might want to back off a little bit. So you get a nice steady stretch. When we're doing that like intense strength strengthening work, that's okay if you breathe faster. But in this stuff, it's really important that you're teaching your muscles to relax. And come back up, stretch the left leg out. 
Raise both arms up and reach for your feet. Then inhale, come back up. <clears throat> Sweep your legs over to the left. The left ankle crosses on top of the arch of the right foot. Sit up tall. Then twist to your right. Come back to center, stretch the legs out, sweep the legs over to the right, sit up tall, twist to your left. Come back to center, stretch the legs out. All right, the last stretch we're gonna do is one of my favorite hip stretches. You're gonna cross your legs so that your ankles are lined up with your knees. If it's difficult to sit up like this, you could put a blanket underneath you. Bring the fingertips in front of you, press through the four corners of your feet like they're pushing out into walls, pin your hips in so your lower belly draws in and start to walk all the way out. If you're not feeling a very deep stretch, then you could stack the shins instead. You could take your ankle to the outside of your knee and then work on descending the top shin as you go forward and you'll feel a much more intense stretch. You could rest your head Then come back up, change the cross of the legs. Right shin in front of left. And you get to see the two sides are different. You feel like you need a deeper stretch. But as always, I encourage you to work towards symmetry on your two sides. So if there's a more flexible side, practice backing off on that side. And come back up. You should feel like the nerves are nice and calm now. Like you're ready for Shavasana. So thanks for watching today. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and donate whatever you can. Just a dollar a month makes a huge difference to help keep the channel going. So set yourself up for Shavasana. Notice that I take care to set my shoulders, my head, and my neck in position.
Turn the palms up. Let your feet fall open. So for the next few minutes, we're just gonna practice watching the breath move in and out through the lungs. You're not trying to control it like you were at the beginning of class, just watching. So the body has its own intelligence. Naturally, it wants to seek balance and harmony, especially after we do good things for it, like all the postures we did, the deep breathing, feel the body naturally seeking balance Let go where you're still gripping, where you can. Make your next breath slightly longer. Then gently bend your knees. Roll over to your right side. And press yourself up to seated. Sit up straight and tall. Join your palms together. With your eyes closed, just take a moment to notice how the body feels. Notice your current mental state. Just notice the shift that comes at the end of the practice. Thanks for watching. Thanks for practicing today. Namaste.